Okay, today I want to talk to you about coordinate systems, and I have a subtitle called Let's Learn Some New Languages, because what we want to learn here is how to write vectors that are written in terms of one basis in a vector space in terms of another basis in a vector space. And you can find this information in section 4.3 of your textbook. So consider this vector in the xy plane. It has coordinates 0.5 along the x and 0.87 along the y. Now if we rotate our coordinate system by pi over the 4, so now we're looking at the red dashed lines, we see that we have not changed the vector at all. But writing now in terms of these new coordinates, which are has an x tilde in the direction of the vector 1, 1, and that's a positive x tilde direction, and the positive y tilde direction is in the direction of minus 1, 1. We now see that our vector has coordinates 0.69 and 0.19, in terms of the x tilde and y tilde coordinate system. So we've done this many times, but what we've seen is that that vector has two different representations depending upon whether or not we start with the x y coordinate system as opposed to when we look at it in the x tilde y tilde coordinate system. So again, x tilde is in the direction of the vector 1 1 and y tilde is in the direction of minus 1 1 and we could think of that as some basis B for R2, which has one vector, 1, 1, the other one, minus 1, 1. And clearly, if you look at those vectors, you see they do form a basis because there are two linearly independent vectors in R2. So the question is, how can we write our vectors 0 0.50, 0 0.87, in terms of the basis B? And another way to think of this is, how do we translate this vector, 0 0.50, 0 0.87, into the language of the basis B? And so what we might do is think about the following system of equations to solve. And so we're trying to figure out what multiple x tilde times the first basis vector 1, 1 plus y tilde times the second basis vector minus 1, 1 will equal to our vector in terms of the x, y coordinate system, which was 0 0.5, 0 0.87. And from this vector equation, we get our matrix equation and we augment that and when we solve we'll get 0 0.69, 0 0.19 which is the way we write that vector in terms of the x tilde, y tilde directions. So what we see here is that we, in this specific example at least, we have a arithmetic way to solve for the new coordinates. So what we like to do as we continue is to try to figure out how we might generalize that. So look at what we have here. To so generalize this translation or tra uh, translation from one basis to another, we can first rewrite the standard basis in terms of the vectors in B. And that's because if you think about it, the standard basis is the vector 1, 0, that's in the positive x direction, and 0, 1 is in the positive y direction. And all vectors in R2 can be written as a linear combination of those two. So we have S1, which is represented by 1, 0, which some of you may know as I hat. And that is some scalar times B1 plus scalar, some scalar times B2. And S2, of course, is what we would call J hat, the vector 0, 1. And that's another scalar times B1 plus a second scalar times B2, because we can write every vector in terms of a basis. So those... Um, standard basis vectors can be written in terms of the basis B for R2 because every vector in R2 can be written in terms of a basis for R2. So again, we know that all of the basis, all of the vectors in R2 can be written in terms of that standard basis. So a random vector A1, A2 and R2 could be written as A1, S1 plus A2, S2. And what you might notice is that the way we call a vector or name a vector a1, A2 is just by the scalars that it takes to multiply each of the basis vectors. So that vector A1, A2 is sometimes referred to as the coordinate vector, right? And so what if we try to now rewrite the vector A1, A2 in terms of the basis B? Well, as you can see here, first we would substitute in S1 as it's written in terms of the basis B and S2 as it's written in terms of the basis B. And so then we might say that A1, A2 is written in terms of the basis B. So we use a subscript because what we want to say now is that we've written this vector in terms of a different basis. And we want to be able to distinguish between the way it's written in terms of the two bases. Okay, so now we would like to generalize the transition from a basis S to another basis T in the vector space V. 
So what we're doing here is we want to generalize what we've just done. If you have a vector in a vector space that's written in terms of one basis, we want to come up with a systematic way to write that vector in terms of another basis by using um, a system of equations. So in our previous problem, we solved this system of equations, right? This was the basis B. Those were two columns were the basis vectors for B. And we augmented that with um, the vector in the standard basis, 0 0.50 and 0 0.87. We solved. And then we got the representation of our vector in terms of the new bases, x tilde, y tilde. So that was 0.69 and 0.19. And so if you look at the linear combination, now we see that it's 0.69 times the first basis vector, 1, 1 plus 0.19 times the second basis vector minus 1, 1, and that's equal to 0.50, 0 0.87. So if I've done this correctly, and you can check my arithmetic, hopefully this will actually equal to that basis over there. I'm sorry, or that vector over there, correction. So therefore, we can write our vector 0 0.5, 0 0.87, in terms of the basis B as 0 0.69, 0 0.19, and notice we write that X with a subscript B, because now our vector x is written in terms of the basis vectors b. What you'll notice, because you've been doing this all along as you've been studying your engineering and mathematics, if the vector is written in terms of the standard basis, i hat, j hat, then we don't put a subscript by the vector, because without a subscript, it's assumed to be written in terms of the standard basis. So can we generalize how we write vectors in different languages or bases? And of course we can. So again, look at how we've written our basis vectors from the standard basis. S1 is equal to x11, b1, plus x12, b2. S2 is equal to x21, b1, plus x22, b2. And if we look at those two vector equations, we can rewrite those. So that's just x11 times 11, plus x12 times minus 11. And that's got to be equal to 1, 0, which is the first basis vector in the standard basis. And then we have another vector equation, x2, 1, 1, 1, plus x2, 2, minus 1, 1, which is equal to s2, which is 0, 1. And so we could solve each of those individually, but because we have a good understanding of how matrix algebra works now, we realize that we could solve for x1, 1, 1 x1, 2, x2, 1, and x2, 2 simultaneously. We'll do that by solving this system of equations. So if you look at this matrix multiplication, you should be able to generate the vector equations on the previous slide. So we'll solve this system of equations by augmenting. And when we do that, we'll get what we call the transition matrix P sub B. And that transition matrix will take me from the basis T, I'm sorry, the, ba the standard basis, to the basis B. And so this is the way that looks. Notice that on the left-hand side of the augment, we have the basis vectors for B. And on the right-hand side of the augment, we have the basis vectors from S, or the standard basis. And when we solve that system of equations, we will find the matrix that takes us from the standard basis to the basis B. So in completion, we see that P of B is called the transition matrix that, that takes vectors written in the basis B and transitions them to the vectors written in terms of the standard basis S. And what we'll see later is that you can actually use the same technique to transition from any um, um, basis in the vector space V, say T, to another basis in the vector space V, say S. And we'll look at that a little bit more closely later on. Hope this helps.